Okay. Open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter number 3 and we'll proceed now to our series. Uh, in this passage entitled The Prayer for Spiritual Strength, Ephesians chapter number 3 verses 14 to 21. And we're looking into the process as mentioned by the Apostle Paul here. And I have uh, mentioned last week, if you would remember, that uh, this process must be a daily experience for us as uh, believers, right? So it must be true in our Christian life on a daily basis. And uh, if you have, if if you're with us for the first time, I, uh, you can always you know visit our Facebook page or YouTube page para po uh, uh, yung mga previews um, sermon so that you can follow us in this in this series. But um, last week we looked into verse number 17 of Ephesians chapter number three. Uh, na kung saan, sabi sa verse number 17, right? Um, it speaks about Christ dwelling in our hearts and we look into that specific phrase, okay? Yung sabi dyan, through, uh, through faith, which is found in the last part of verse number 17. And sabi natin, we mentioned last week that that has something to do with our obedience to the to the word of God. So, in other words, in order for Christ to dwell in our hearts, okay, on a daily basis, we must spend time with Him in His Word, and not just spend time with His Word, but respond in obedience to whatever God will be saying to us from His Word on a on a daily basis. Okay. Now, if you read the article that I sent. Uh, to the FG leaders. And I hope the FG leaders and the coordinates were able to send it to your threads, no? Pag hindi, sisihin nyo yung leader nyo, no? Kaya sabi ko, please, pass. Right? So, um, the, the title of the article is The Offensively Ordinary Steps to, to Godliness. The author, the author wrote, Paul tells the Colossians, Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him, Colossians 3.17. Our spiritual maturity, he says, rests in those words, whatever and everything. Obey God not only in the seen, but the, in the unseen, not only in the exceptional, but also in the mundane. Not only in the crisis moments of life, but in the seemingly casual moments strewn throughout our days. In other words, it's not every day that God gives us grand opportunities for obedience, right? Because oftentimes, the opportunities that God gives to us on a daily basis are come in simple, smaller tasks that we often neglect, we often ignore, and we often fail to recognize as opportunities for obedience. Right? Like a simple, like simply obeying the pastor's request, please send to your FG. Sino nakalimot? Oh, please respond. Sino ang sumagot? Diba? Or it can be a small act of kindness, a simple smile to your boss, or a simple hi to your colleague. Ano pa? Or, or loving or saying, you know, doing kind words, saying kind words to your spouse, to your children, or to your parents, obeying your parents, and even to strangers. Because Jesus said, even the simple acts of kindness, even giving a cup of cold water, right? But if you do it in the name of Jesus Christ, it will be rewarded, right? It will not be forgotten by the Lord. So those are opportunities for us to obey, okay? And every day of our life, God gives us opportunities that as I said earlier, most of the times we often oversee or neglect because they come in simple, small things. Right? The same author said in the same article, trusting God with an afternoon's ruined plans trains us to trust Him with our children's salvation. 
Giving sacrificially with a tight income readies us to do so with a comfortable one. Unashamedly speaking of Jesus before a neighbor prepares us, should the day ever come to speak his name before persecutors. For now, do not despise the day of small obedience. That's a good reminder. What? Do not despise the day of small obedience. Because when we become faithful in little, then we will be faithful in much. Actually, little opportunities for obedience are, are God's training. Right? So that one day when those grand opportunities for obedience come, we would be ready and we would be prepared. So you might think that your day is boring or stressful or in chaos, but within those boredom, within the stress or within the chaos of the day, okay, I, there are a lot of opportunities for us to, to obey. Amen? That's why, ano yung, ano? Ano yung uh, conclusion natin last week? What should we do every day? Begin your day, spend time with God, not just in prayer, but above all, with His Word. Because God will speak to us through His Word. Ask for God's message. Hindi yung, Lord, ano ba message mo sa akin? Mangungusap talaga ang Panginoon to His Word. Sometimes, I said in, in our prayer meeting, sometimes God uses circumstances. He will speak to us. But through that circumstance, it should lead us back to the Word of God. Because, you know, laging ang salita ng Panginoon ng ano, magiging basihan natin, magiging basis natin. So, seek for God's message on a daily basis and then be sensitive to the Spirit's moving uh, because He will provide opportunities for us to obey and obey with meekness or humility uh, and respond uh, in obedience. Okay, so uh, that's our uh, lesson last Friday because that's how, uh, because according to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it is the Word of God uh, that pierces our hearts, right? It transforms us. The Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Right? So God's word is powerful enough that it can change our hearts, it can transform our minds so that every day on a daily basis, the Spirit of God can renew our inner man. And as the Lord strengthens us with might, okay, uh, we will respond in obedience to the word of God. And then, anumangyari, Christ will what? Will be able to dwell in our hearts because we are living in faith. We are obeying the Word of God. Nakita niyo yung connection? Okay? Na Ephesians chapter 3 verses 14 to, uh, to 17. Now, let's proceed now in our study and we'll look into the next step in this process and the question that we would answer is this. What happens when Christ dwells in our hearts through faith? Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 3 and let's read, start reading again from verses 14 to 21 and let, let us allow God's word, God to speak to us through His word this afternoon. Let's all stand as we uh, responsibly read this passage. Uh, let's read with an understanding. I'll start with verse number 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. May be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you because we know that your word is powerful, that it can change and transform us, O oh God. That's why as we meditate on your word this afternoon as we listen to the preaching we pray lord that um, 
your spirit would just open our hearts and our minds give us understanding give us hearts humble hearts ready to listen to you and we just pray lord that your spirit would just enable us to uh, quicken us to to be able to uh, see and understand your message for us today and give us uh, ears that are ready to listen so that we would not just hear physically, but we would hear spiritually and respond in the meetings. Bless our time together with your word and with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You take your seats. So let's focus our attention this afternoon in the last part of verse number 17. Kasi doon natin makikita yung next step sa ating process dito sa passage na to, no? uh, The Apostle Paul wrote in verse number 17 that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. We've studied about that. Uh, for the past few weeks and then look at that last part that you what being rooted and grounded in love i want you to underline or circle those words no rooted grounded and then phrase in love Ay, mahalaga rin yun, ano? Sa ating, uh, now when you consider this particular phrase or this part of the passage um there's a sense no na parang this is not really a part of the cycle but there's also a sense that it's a part of the cycle. In other words, in one sense, it's not really a result of the daily experience. But in another sense, it can and it's, it is and it must also be a part of the daily experience. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look into uh, the tense of the word in the Greek, in the original, of the words being rooted and being grounded, Okay, they are in the perfect tense, and the mood is they are uh, it is participle. Okay, now ano ibig sabihin kapag ang Greek word ay in the perfect participle? Well, it simply means that an action happened in the past, but it has a continuous effect up until the present. Okay, so something happened in the past. But the effect is on, ongoing. That's why I said, in a sense, it's not part of the cycle because the action happened in the past, but there's a sense that it can be a part of the cycle because it can be the result of Christ dwelling in us on a daily basis, okay? Because the effect is what? Continuous. I guess, yeah? Uh, do you understand? Okay. So, as believers, in other words, our being rooted and grounded in love happened at one point in the past and we are continually experiencing the effects or the results of our being rooted and grounded in in love now first of all let's look into the essence of of, of this uh, this afternoon what does it mean to be rooted and grounded okay, in love or being rooted and grounded in love if this happened in the past Probably your question is, when did it happen? When were we rooted and grounded? Okay. Well, if you look into the two terms, uh, rooted and grounded, rooted is what? An agricultural term, right? And grounded is what? Industrial or ano ba? Construct, ano ba? Sa construction, di ba? Yung found, uh, grounded or foundation, founded, okay? built up. Okay? Uh, those are some of the words that the Bible also used. So, architectural, siguro, word, you know, no? So, uh, the word rooted in the original Greek, uh, rizo, it means I cause to take root, I plant, I fix, I firmly, I establish. Figuratively, uh, it means to become stable, to render firm, to fix, to be firmly established, to be strengthened with spiritual roots, to be firmly fixed with a focus upon the source of such strength okay Mamaya. so may idea kayo, no? so um, what the word rooted uh, means the metaphor used by the apostle paul now the word grounded which is from the greek word temeli o o it means to lay the foundation of so uh, yung word na foundation no um, so especially probably to those who are working in the construction industry you're very familiar with this word like the engineers no brother Abed, no 
Mahalaga actually yung word na to, okay? Because the foundation of any structure is very much important as far as the stability and the safety of, of the entire uh, building is, is, is concerned. No? So here we can see two metaphors that the Apostle Paul used to describe who we are as believers, okay? As far as our relationship with Christ is concerned. That, the first one is that of a tree. Okay? Or if you look at John chapter 15, Jesus' analogy, the vine. Right? If you go to Romans chapter 11, olive tree. Uh, the fig tree was also used to refer to Israel. Right? So we see that illustration or metaphor of the tree and also at the same time the house. Okay? Or a building. Nung panahon nila, wala namang siguro mga parang Burj Khalifa, no? Mga building na gano'n. Pero may mga structures, Roman times, New Testament, okay? Coliseum, the Roman Coliseum, big structures, right? So, we can see uh, the Apostle Paul using those uh, metaphors. Uh, but these metaphors, when we look into the scriptures, often describe our relationship with God. For example, Psalm chapter 1. How many of you memorize Psalm chapter 1? Verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor seat at the seats of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water that bring its forth its fruit in its season. Its leaves shall not wither, but whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Hindi mo ganda yan. Junior church na. Juniors pa. Kaya na scripture memorization na. Matthew chapter 7. If you're familiar with that, verses 24 to 25, no? Jesus said, Therefore, whoever hears these say of mine, and thus then I will liken him to a wise man who builds his house upon a rock solid foundation foolish man a foolish man sabi nung kanta a foolish man builds his house upon the sand eh paano dito sa Dubai no? kaya sand puro sand eh no? pero because of technology na no? pero solid foundation pa rin di ba? kaya they make sure that the foundation is solid right? so the rock in the passage that we have read earlier Anong psalm yan, Brother Jeff? 92. 92, the last parts, right? Rock was mentioned there, and planted was also mentioned there, right? So we often see these metaphors or illustrations used in the scripture to describe um, our relationship with, with, with the Lord. And here in Ephesians chapter number 3, the Apostle Paul says, as believers, we are what? Being rooted and grounded in in love now in what sense did this happen in the past well it happened at the moment when we trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and believed in him as our personal Lord and Savior look at Colossians chapter 2 verses 6 to 7 okay. Colossians chapter number 2 verses 6 to 7 The Word of God says, As you therefore have what? Received Christ Jesus the Lord. Underline the word receive or, or encircle it, right? So walk in Him. Then verse 7, look at that. Rooted and built up in Him. So underline those words again. Rooted and built up. And established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding in, in it with thanks, with thanks, thanksgiving. Okay, so the rooted and grounded in love means to be rooted and grounded in Jesus Christ, particularly in His love and because of His love. So, as believers, that's when that incident happened in our life. When we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God has also rooted us in Christ and grounded us in Christ and rooted us and grounded us in His love. Alright? So that happened in the past. 
as far as our salvation is concerned, but it doesn't just affect our salvation, but it also has an effect on our sanctification. We'll look into that uh, later on. So as far as our salvation is concerned, it means okay, that our salvation in Christ is sure and secure. Amen? Okay. Kasi, rooted tayo, yung faith natin, rooted kanino? Okay, Jesus Christ. Okay. And then, the foundation is not other than the Lord Himself. We are grounded in Him. So in other words, whatever happens, as far as our relationship with God is concerned through Jesus Christ, it's something sure and secure. No storms can ever what? Put that tree down because it's so rooted in Christ. Deeply rooted in Christ. No earthquake can ever shake that faith. Why? Because it's grounded firmly in Christ, our chief cornerstone. Amen? Amen? So, uh, I wish, I, I guess we'll not spend more time in this. No, this is also another in our series of study. But because when you look at chapter number three, the emphasis on the on is on the effect, the ongoing effect. So we'll spend more time on that. But as far as our salvation is concerned, the idea that we are rooted and grounded in Christ, it means that our salvation in Christ is sure and secure. Amen. Amen. We are secured in Christ. We are secured in Christ. Right. Okay. So that's why. We believe in eternal security. That we would never lose the gift of salvation that the Lord Jesus Christ has given to us. Okay? And why? Ano sabi sa Romans chapter 8? Okay? Look into that. Magkanta in Romans chapter 8, ano? For God so... Uh, ah, yeah. Starting from verse number 37. Okay? Romans chapter 8, starting from verse number 37. Paul wrote, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Meron ba? Sabi niya, Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Verse 30, as it, 36, As it is written, For your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be what? Shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? So the source and the foundation of our faith is sure and secure. We are rooted and grounded in Christ and in His love. Amen? And the Bible says nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen? Amen. That's the reason for rejoicing. Amen? Amen? That our salvation does not depend on our works. Imagine if, if God would use our works as a basis for our salvation. Probably before this, if the Lord returned at right at this very moment, no? Baka maraming maiwan sa atin. Diba? So praise God for His, for His grace and His mercy uh, toward us. Now, so that's as far as our salvation is concerned. we will not deal more about that. Okay? But, what about as far as our sanctification or our growing relationship with Christ is concerned? Okay? What does it mean to be rooted and grounded in love? Okay? So sabi natin that happened in the past, but it has an ongoing effect. So now, let's look into the effect okay, uh, of our being rooted and grounded in, in Jesus Christ. Now, when you look at Ephesians chapter 3, okay, we mentioned that this is a process and this process must be a daily experience, right? So when you when we try to follow you logic the Apostle Paul, okay, although our being rooted in Christ and grounded in Him happened once during our salvation ex experience, 
the effect of that should also be a daily experience. Okay? And that experience is based on what? The dwelling of Christ in our hearts. Kasi process siya, di ba? So in other words, when we pray, God will, ano yung sunod? Alimutan yun na. Grant us to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man. And what's the next one? When we are strengthened with might. Okay? Christ will what? Dwell in our hearts through faith. And when Christ dwells in our hearts through faith, okay, we would experience the ongoing effect of what? Being rooted and grounded in love. Okay? You follow the process? Okay, the, the logic, no? Okay? So now, here's what we'll try to do. Let's try to imagine and let's use the metaphor that the Apostle Paul used here, okay? And look at John chapter 15, right? So Jesus Christ said, I am the vine. We are the branches. So as far as the tree is concerned, what's our part? We are the branches, right? Okay? And then as far as the building is concerned or the house is concerned, okay? Uh, Jesus Christ is the foundation. Okay? Now we'll look into that later on. Okay? Now, if you're a branch, okay, what kind of branch do you want to be like? Hindi yung branch ng ano ah, ng sari-sari store or grocery ah. If you're a branch and Jesus Christ is the vine, okay, or the tree, what kind of branch do you want to be like? Imagine you well, for sure, you want to be a growing branch, right? Right? With leaves and much more, I know, with fruits. Not just fruit, much fruit. But sabi sa John 15, I know, I more fruit, much fruit. Diba? Kung ikaw yung branch na yun na connected kay Christ, gusto mo ano? You're a living branch. You're a healthy branch. And you're a fruit-bearing branch. Because sabi sa John 15, if you do, do not bear fruit, anong gagawin ng vine dresser? Cut. Ipuprune. Huh? Right? So, that's what you want to be. Now, if you're a house or a building, what kind of a house or a building do you want to be? Yeah, minsan pag may pangarap ka, when you go back to the Philippines, you want one of the things that probably your one of your dreams for is probably to own a house, right? What kind of house? Siyempre, gusto mo yung ano? You want a big house, right? Kung building ka as much as possible, parang ano, no? Yung uh, tall building, right? Just like, ano, Burj Khalifa. Dito tayo, alam nga sabi nila, no? Uh, one of the signs that the uh, uh, power, yung, yung, ano, yung world power is emerging is the location of the tallest buildings in the world. That's why the power, sad nila, from the west is now shifting to the east. Bakit? Nasa atin yun, di ba? Middle east. Right? Yung tallest building, Burj Khalifa, tapos magtatayo pa sila ng isa. Mas mataas pa, di ba? Okay, so... Tayo na lang. Kaya yun sa akin, kaya sa akin na nasa end times na rin talaga tayo, no? so, because prophecies are being... Why? Why did... Probably uh, they desire to do that because they want, you know, to build. If they ever they would build something, they want to build the tallest and the greatest building. Right? So, um, in other words, if you're a tree, you want to be a fruit-bearing branch in the tree. Right? If you're building a structure, you want to be, you know, as grand as as much as as um, possible. Okay. Now, if you're going to be a branch that's growing and is bearing fruit, you need to make sure that your tree, that the tree you're attached to, is strong and deeply rooted. Right? Why? Because where do you get all the things that you would need from the tree? Who is what? Grounded and deeply rooted, right? 
Kasi sa mga galing yung nutrients. Doon, di ba? So that, when that happens, when you're bearing fruit, whenever storms would come, no, minsan hindi masyadong ano, hindi maapektuhan yung condition mo. Bakit? Because you are connected, attached to a very strong and grounded uh, tree. Right? Same thing is true with the structure. If you're a building, if you're a house, what kind of foundation do you want? You want a solid, firm foundation. Why? Because no matter how tall, no matter how beautiful you are as a building, if an earthquake strikes and your foundation is not solid, what will happen? Kaya na nagka-earthquake dati, no? Sa Baguio. Ang daming ano. Kailan yun? So, since as believers we are rooted and grounded in Christ, when we think about the source and the foundation of our faith, sabi ko nga kanina, no? since we are in Christ, it's something what's sure and secure. Now, what does that mean? It means that as a branch who are connected to, to the true vine, who is Jesus Christ, it means that we can grow and bear much fruit. Right? Why? Because yung source natin, nakakailangan natin natin in order for us to bear much fruit, has unlimited power and resources. Correct? Tama ba? Para di kayo naniniwala. Diba? So if we are the branch, Jesus said, and Jesus said, I am the vine, sabi niya, then ask the branch, do you believe that you can bear much fruit? Isa lang nag-amen. Parang hindi ako kayo naniniwala. Pwede, di ba? Bakit kasi yung source natin, sino? Si Jesus Christ Himself. Right? Now, of course, as long as what? We are abiding in Christ and Him in us. Pero sabi niya, if that happens, we can live an abundant life and bear much fruit. As far as being rooted in Christ is concerned. Now, about being grounded in Christ, sabi ni Paul sa Ephesians chapter 2, we belong to the household of God. As believers. And the the Lord Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. The foundation was established by the apostles, okay? The church was founded by the apostles, okay? But the chief cornerstone, the chief foundation is none other than Jesus Christ. So if Christ is the foundation of this church, what does that what does that mean? It means that we can build and build and build because the foundation is what? Solid, strong, and secure. Right? That, kung baga hindi tayo matatakot, i-build yung kingdom ng Panginoon, palawakin yung kingdom ng Panginoon. Bakit? Yung foundation natin, ano? Strong, solid, and secure. Do you get the idea? Do you get the point? And I think, this is what, I believe that this is what the Apostle Paul is saying here. The point of the Apostle Paul is that he is reminding the Ephesian believers about their being rooted and their being grounded in Christ and His love, which happened in the past, and he is reminding them that there should be an ongoing effect in their lives as far as that experience is concerned. And what should be that effect? It should... What is word John? So let her see. Kaya ginamit kong word. Growth. Okay? In other words, when you follow Paul's logic, when Christ dwells in our hearts through faith, it would be evident because growth will be seen in our life. In other words, as believers, we need to experience growth in our relationship with God, in our service towards God, and even others. Bakit? Because the source and foundation of our faith, who is none other than Jesus Christ, okay? Ayano. 
unlimited in resources, solid foundation. So that's why, you know, it means that all of us believers have the potential to bear much fruit and build yung kingdom ng Panginoon. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. Now, if you see a big tree, a big tall tree, and you see its branches with great with leaves and bearing much fruit, and then you see a branch with one leaf and may fruit naman, pero anliit compared to the others. Okay? What would you think of that branch? Parang dry na dry. Parang, ano yung isip niya? Parang, parang awkward na. Parang nangyari yun. The rest, ang yabong-yabong. Tapos ito, parang hindi fit doon. Diba? Tama? Ngayon, ang daming construction. What if you pass through an area, no? Ang lalaki ng mga machines, ang lalaki ng mga materials na ginagamit, na naisip mo, ah, they might be, ang laki ng hukay, no? Ang lalim ng foundation, they might be building another tower here. And then when you look in front, di ba, minsan, on this side will rise. Nakita mo yung picture, bahay ko. <laughs> Anong iisipin mo? Why are they spending so much time and money and effort in building a big, huge foundation when they would just build a bahay kubo? Right? Did you get the point? In other words, as believers, we should not be settled with our relationship with Jesus Christ. Hindi yung pa-attend-attend lang ng service. Okay? Minsan nga, uh, you're here but you're not listening. Basta lang maka-attend, no? Joining the service, just listen to the sermon or praying every now and then. And then when there's opportunity to, you know, uh, give or to have fellowship, uh, you know, sometimes you're there, sometimes you're not, okay? But you're just content with the usual, relaxed, casual Christian life. There's more to that. As far as our relationship with Jesus Christ is concerned, right? Don't be settled by warming up, just warming up the pews every Fridays, when you can at this, you know, and you can also serve God and be used by God greatly in His kingdom, not just here in Dubai, but who knows, even in other parts of the world, right? In other words, we cannot be settled and comfortable in our Christian life as far as our relationship with God in Christ is concerned and our service to Him and other people is concerned. Dapat na experience natin itong ano? Growth. Dapat on a daily basis, we are continually being rooted and grounded in Christ and in His, His love. Amen? Amen. We should not be stagnant and be a mediocre Christian, but rather we should be abounding Christians. Because when you look into the Word of God, yung word na abound is often used, right? What comes into your mind? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, Anayan? Therefore, if anyone is in, yung ba yan? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always what? Abounding in the work of the Lord. Because as much as you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Abounding. Can I always relax? Always, you know, mediocre in our service to the Lord. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. And that is, no? Verses 6 to 8. Paul reminding the, the Corinthian believers to be generous in their giving. And I'm starting from verse 6. But I say, 
But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Verse 8, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, have always having all sufficiency in all things, may have, what? An abundance for every good work. Nabanggit na naman yung abundance. Kaya yun yung reason bakit tayo may FPU. So that we can give generously and we would abound in every good work. Okay? Gets nyo? Philippians chapter 1, another example. Okay? Verses 9 to 11. Philippians chapter 1. Verses 9 to 11. And this I pray that your love may what? May abound still more and more. So yung love ng Philippian believers, abounding na yan, pero prayer pa ni Paulo, sabi niya, that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve the things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. So in other words, as believers in Christ, since we have been rooted and grounded in Christ, okay, we need to abound because it should have an ongoing effect in our life. Amen? Can you look at the person beside you and ask him, are you abounding? Abounding in buffet. Pero ibang abounding dapat, no? Spiritual abounding. So are we abounding? Are we abounding in the work of the Lord? Are we abounding in good works? Are we abounding more and more in 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 love? Okay? You see, there's so much um, there's so much that Christ has for us, for you and for me, as far as our relationship with Him is concerned. Ha? Hindi pong marami pang gustong ibuhos ang Panginoon sa atin at ipakita sa atin kung gano'n niya tayo kamahal. Amen? So don't be settled. Desire more and more of Him. Ay, well, that I may know Him. Experience Him. And as far as our service is concerned to God and the kingdom building of God, there's more to this that we have right now. That we are experiencing right now. God is preparing, you know, God has prepared something greater and bigger for us. That's why our theme last year is what? Expanding the kingdom of God. And our theme this year is extending the gospel testimony. Kasi, ano, you know, in other words, if you're a Christian and you're abounding in Christ, you would have desire for a growing relationship with Christ and a growing service to Christ in building His kingdom. Bakit? Kasi rooted ka in Christ and you are grounded in Him. Amen? Now, we'll discuss more of the effects of our being rooted and grounded in Christ and His love in, in the next um, uh, sermons now, and I, but I believe this is God's message for us today. If you are rooted and grounded in Christ and in His love, there's always this great potential for growth as far as our relationship and our service to Christ are concerned. And this is the principle that we can see here. Okay? Let's read it all together. Ready? Begin. An abounding Christian life is a result of an abiding Christian life. If we are in Christ and Christ is in us and we are abiding in Him and He in us, okay? if Christ is dwelling in our hearts, okay? you abounding, ano, may experience natin yan sa buhay natin. Why? Because we would not be settled. Because we would desire more and more of Christ. We would desire more and more for Christ. Amen? Amen? More and more of Christ. And more and more for 
for Christ. Again, when you look into the process, this is the result of the dwelling of Christ in our hearts. When Christ is at home in our hearts, there will always be that earnest desire to experience Him more and do more for Him. And the good news is that we cannot do it by ourselves. Amen? But the grace of God is available. And it's abounding. And His grace is sufficient so that we can love Him more and we can do more for Him. I'll close with this. Uh, one, John MacArthur uh, said this in one of his uh, sermons entitled Experiencing the Power of Christ. When Jesus Christ can settle down and be at home in your life and there's nothing to clean and there's nothing to chasten and there's nothing to confront and He can just be at home at home there, He will fill your life at every point with love. And you will be established solidly in love as a way of life. A love that is deep and secure through all kinds of winds and all kinds of shakings. Notice that. A love that is what? Deep and secure through all kinds of winds and all kinds of shakings. All kinds of offenses. And you will experience his love. So in other words, when we are established solidly in love because of Jesus Christ dwelling in our hearts, that he said that our way of life, that this will, he said that we'll be able to have this way of life through all kinds of what? Winds and all kinds of shakings in life. In other words, if we're continuously growing in our being rooted and grounded in Christ, no matter what storms in life that may come our way, walang kaman ng trabaho, ano ba? Ipang mga storms. Magkaroon ka man ng problema sa relationship, ano ba? Parang ayaw mo na sa work mo, hindi maganda yung relationship mo sa boss, or whatever, no? Whatever storms in life that may come our way, or no matter how much yung shaking, minsan ano, no? yung storms medyo, minsan yung mga minor things, kaya kaya pa. Pero minsan there are times that once in a while, God shakes her life. He shakes the foundation of our faith. Di ba? Dumating ba yung storms or yung, yung winds or yung shaking no? sa buhay natin, no? no matter how much intensity that, that might be, we will never fall and we will never waver in our faith. We will stand firm, we will stand strong, and we will continue to abound even in the midst of those winds and shakings. Amen? Amen. See, the problem is most of the times a little bit of wind, a little bit of shaking, and we stop abounding. Huh? We stop spending time with the Lord. We stop praying. We stop meditating His Word. We stop serving the Lord. Amen? Sino na experience ng tasa ka man? Lahat tayo siguro. Ako. Maraming ulit, di ba? Ayaw na umatend ng FG. Hindi na ma-attend ng worship. Di ba ba? Hindi na nagpaparamdam. Laging scene zone na lang. Sa group chat, sa FG chat. A little shaking. A little wind. No abounding. <laughs> no. Nothing. Pero if Christ is dwelling in our hearts, ang sabi dyan, even in the midst of those things, we will still continue to what? Abound in our relationship with Christ, in our, our service for Christ. Because that's the result of Christ dwelling in our hearts. Amen? Yes. I'll close with this again. Last night at the Today, one of uh, my partners in the ministry died.
old. Uh, he's almost my age. He's not in the full-time ministry, but uh, when I was the president of um, the Young Adults Organization in Southern Tagalog in the Philippines, he was my vice president, si Ryan Rosa. Uh, if you've been with us at a prayer meeting, I asked for prayers for him. No? Um, he and his family just, they're in Amsterdam. Actually, when Camille had a flight, she met them. No? But they just had a short vacation in the Philippines. And then suddenly, what they thought was pneumonia actually became a battle for his life. For weeks, it later on it became parang comatose na siya, yun yung brain, and brain dead. And then, just this morning, I uh, I saw yung message from his wife, Marshi, that Ryan went home to him. Oh very young, very talented, and gifted, and may heart sa gawain ng mga. But, today, uh, he went home to be with the Lord. But, what, what, um, encouraged me the most is even in the yung process na to, ano, yung, yung wife niya, si Marshi. I was thinking about it, and I was like, oh, yung, no? if, you're, if you're the wife, no? I said, you're Camille, no? Ready ka na ba? Baka sa kalim insurance naman na kayo. Pero, di ba, who would have thought, no? You would just spend vacation in the Philippines, and then, yung pala, that would be your last moment with your husband. She wrote this, ito yung pinost niya, no? Gumawa kasi sila ng page yung Incredible Ryan. Sabi, our Incredible Ryan has gone to be with the Lord at 2.45 a.m. today. He has fought a good fight. I'm so proud of him. Our daughter, Sam, uh, was there crying as we wait for his last heartbeat. I don't know, niya, he's, paano kaya ako si Zoe, no? Naan doon? Tapos sa akin niya, yan, no? Uh, Sam was, cry was there crying as we wait for his last heartbeat. She asked, why? If God is good, why? If God is powerful, why? Why can't you know, he be healed? I mean, I answered, I don't know. I also asked, why? And I don't know the answer. What I know is that God is good. I looked at Ryan and smiled as I told him to enjoy heaven. Philippians 1.21, for me to live is Christ and to die is God. I was thinking about, you know, your strength of the wife to say these things and be strong in the midst of this great shaking sa kanilang family. And I said to myself, well, see, um, probably, if not, the reason why she's, she's able to say these verses because, you know, she has been deeply rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. Even before this happened. Because she'll minor things on a daily basis. Experiencing Christ, the dwelling of Christ in our hearts, simple things, small things. Okay? which leads us to being rooted and grounded in Christ, na kung saan dumating yung time, the grand opportunity for obedience, ay she was able to still abound in good works and do yung will ng Panginoon. Okay? Because Christ is dwelling in the heart. So, reminder again, life is short. Right? Life is very short. Um, we have battles. We experience battles on a daily basis. But remember this. There will be greater battles that we will definitely experience in life and we will face. So unless we learn to abide and abound in Christ today, even in the midst of the small struggles or trials or temptations or challenges that we face on a daily basis today, we would never learn to abide and abound when these great and big challenges come into our life. So be faithful. Amen? Say to the person beside you, be faithful. Be faithful. 
Be faithful. Be, be obedient faithful. even in the small tasks that God opens up for us. Because by doing this with joy, even in the midst of sufferings and trials, okay, not only God will reward us for eternity, in eternity, but also God will greatly and graciously provide great, greater opportunities in the future. Because as He builds our character on a daily basis. Being renewed. The inner man on a daily basis. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for reminding us that as far as our being connected with you is concerned and our foundation in you is concerned, is something sure, strong, secure, and um, limitless of God. And we know that it is your desire for us to experience an abundant life in you. Not necessarily materially, but spiritually, oh God. And thank you for reminding us that we, as we abide in you, we must abound in you and for you as well. So Lord, bless these truths into our hearts. And we pray that we would truly experience that abounding in you on a daily basis. Continue to speak to us. Continue to mold us. And prepare us even for greater opportunities for obedience. Bless these words into our hearts in Jesus' name.